So in the last lecture we introduced uh, the idea of center of mass where we said center of mass is given as sum over m i x i vector divided by sum over m i where x is not really the x axis ve vector sum vector well not some vector vector pointing to mass i okay so this is how we define center of mass and uh, we said that this equation is same as where m is the total mass of the system that is sum of all the particles and v is the velocity of center of mass that is dr over dt now what are the benefits of de de defining this kind of thing first of all uh, when when we we have already done problems when we said uh, that if the net force of the system is zero, then the momentum of the system, that is the total movement of the system, remains conserved, which can also be stated in terms of center of mass, which means this is a constant, right? Because we already have said that p one plus p two plus equals uh, P, capital P, which is nothing but MB, right? Okay, the other uh, aspect is that uh, this formulation is useful when um, we don't have, or in fact, we when we have to treat a system like a point particle what does that mean here as you can see we are reducing this equation which has a dimension <coughs> this equation is a dimension p i's can be located in many different places and we are sort of rewriting it in terms of just one point mass uh, which is useful in certain situations and it is particularly useful in situations when we do not have to when we have all when we do not have to treat the system with dimension um, uh, well we, 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 like dimension is not really playing any role in system then we can treat it as a particle. For example, let's say if you have this this guy here. Now, if this guy is moving with the velocity v and has mass m, then if dimension is not playing any role, that is, this ruler stick or meter stick uh, has a dimension, and, which if, and if in this problem it's not really playing any role, then we do not have to formulate this whole thing explicitly we can just talk in terms of the center of mass there will be problems and these things will become more more clear and the third is uh, we will will be finding this helpful in problems when we'll talk about equilibrium like for example here let's say if you have a mirror stick center of mass we know acts uh, the, 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 the force of gravity we know acts through center of mass and that's why it's also called center of gravity so we know this system is not stable if center of mass of this ruler lies here while this system is stable if we know the center of mass of this system lies somewhere here so you see it, by knowing the center of mass of the system of the system we can tell if the system if the system is stable or not at least that is one of the parameter so it will be useful in equilibrium okay 
um, regarding center of mass of continuous systems. So we have seen that center of mass is defined as R equals sum over mi xi where x is the vector towards mass m. It's not really the x-axis, it's some vector. If you do not like it, you can say mi ri, where r is the vector, over sum over mi. So rep let's replace xi with ri to avoid confusion. People use different con different notations, so it's not really a big problem. Okay, and now this can be generalized. Let's say instead of point particles, you have a two-dimensional system, let's say something like this. Then how will you find the center of mass? And let's assume the density of the system is set throughout the same. Then this thing can be simply extended as integral over dm x divided by dm where what we mean by this is that we have sm taken a small element which is mass dm Let we have been calling it r so let's call this r divided by dm so this is r and this is dm and you see dm times r is nothing but this but only for a smaller mass and then you integrate it over the whole mass to get the numerator similarly smaller this is nothing but the sum of small small masses small differential masses and this gives the denominator so this is how we define the um, uh, the center of mass for continuous system now dm can itself be defined in many different ways what is dm what is the small what is the small mass of this system how can you really define dm well for this you will be given very clear statements like you have this distribution and you will be told the density of this or you can say the surface density because a two dimensional is a two dimensional object that is how uh, how the circle the sur you will be given in beforehand that the surface density of this guy is let's say sigma then if you take a small area element you know that density is given as for two dimension as mass over area this is the standard definition so this is given then you can say dm equals sigma times da what is da well da is the area of this small square and suddenly you will have a way to find da in terms of dx and dy we will talk about that more similarly you can in fact have a three dimensional case in this case it's a three dimensional object and then you will have a three dimensional figure and this will be actually dv that is a volume element and here density is defined as mass over volume so that gives dm equals rho which is the density dv and then you can calculate r as sum of sum over rho r dv over sum over rho dv or here you can calculate it as r equals sigma r d a divided by sig not sigma d a okay so this is two dimension this is two dimension and we'll talk uh, we'll, we'll take some examples in the next class